Welcome back to my channel everyone. It's good to be back and I'm very, very excited about today's recipe because A, it's tacos, and B, I'm gonna try to recreate my go-to Chipotle order that's loaded with one of my favorite braised slash barbecued meats, barbacoa. Okay, let's dive into the recipe and see how it turns out. All right, so the first thing on the prep list is to get the meat cooking since it will easily take a few hours before it's ready to shred. So here I have a large cut of chuck roast, which is pretty tough and perfect for long cooking times. So you're gonna heavily season it with salt, cumin, uh, ground red peppers, such as ancho chilies, and a good slather from some smoky canned chipotle sauce. If you wanna be true to barbacoa though, um, then you're gonna use either beef cheeks, lamb, or goat shoulder but I really had a hard time finding them uh, on this day. Anyways, give this a good caramelization on all sides in a hot cast iron pan or grill, then cover it and gently cook it at 275 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about four to five hours. If you want, you could add a little water every now and then uh, if it starts to char on the bottom of the pan. Next up is the tomatillo and red chili sauce or hot sauce that makes this taco very, very special to me. Uh, you're gonna grab several tomatillos and peel the dried leaves off, then roast them in the broiler or on a grill until they're charred on the outside and tender. Halfway through, add a few cloves of garlic and continue to roast until the garlic has good color on it. Transfer everything to a blender with the addition of some cumin, canned chipotle peppers, a generous squeeze of lime juice and a sprinkle of salt. And you're gonna blend this on high speed for one to two minutes, then reserve it in a bowl until you're ready to use it. Now comes the corn salsa. So you're more than welcome to cook the corn if you want that tender feel, but here I'm just gonna cut it straight off the cob and mix it in uh, with some chopped red onions, jalapenos, cilantro, a good squeeze of lime juice, and salt to finish. Give this a solid mix and set it aside until you are ready to assemble your taco. So next on the assembly list is the pinto beans, and they are very straightforward. Here I'm going to lightly cook the quartered onion, cumin, and oil together before adding the beans for a really deep, savory flavor that will infuse nicely into the beans. Also, if you have time, soak the pinto beans for at least an hour before cooking. Uh, they'll plump up nice and beautifully and uh, tend not to split or crack. Once the beans are in the pot and covered with water, simmer for about 45 minutes or so until they're tender, and don't forget to season them with a pinch of salt. So it's been about four hours and the barbacoa should be ready to go. Uh, gently remove it from the pan and begin to shred it while it's smoking hot since it's at its most juicy and tender point, making this uh, process very, very easy to do. All right, so at this point, basically everything's ready to go other than the cilantro lime rice. Um, so here I have already cooked up a pot of white jasmine rice and to it I'll be adding a handful of chopped cilantro and a generous squeeze of lime juice. Gently mix this together and it's time to assemble my tacos. So at Chipotle, they normally hot press the tortillas, um, but since I don't have a proper press, I'll just be simply warming the tortilla over my stovetop 
and begin the assembly. First thing down is the cilantro lime rice, um, then comes the savory pinto beans. I've never really been a fan of black beans, um, to be honest. Then comes the incredibly tender and flavorful barbacoa. After that, it's the corn salsa, hot sauce, sour cream, and then the shredded jack, and finally a mound of shredded romaine lettuce. And that's it, my favorite go-to chipotle order of barbacoa tacos straight from home. What's up guys? Okay, so the uh, Chipotle taco, or my favorite Chipotle taco from home is done. Um, this is the one I order all the time, like I said in the video. Uh, the barbacoa meat is really the, um, the, the thing that draws me most to this taco. I love pulled, barbecued, braised style meats. And um, you know, the first time I went to Chipotle, long, long time ago, uh, this was the taco I ordered and slowly kind of modified into what it is today. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out and see how I did it justice um, cooking it at home. Right off the bat, uh, the tortilla is a little different. It's not as like, as like soft because they steam theirs in like a flat press. Um, mine was, you know, over an open flame. So it's not that it's dry. It just has a little bit more of a crispy texture to it. Yeah, okay, let, let me, that's the first thing I saw. Hmm. Very similar to the taco from Chipotle. Well, I would say the meat is a little bit more tender and juicy just because it's not sitting in their like seasoned um, au jus that you know, would typically come from braising meat and then having to store it in a third pan like they do. Kinda, it kind of brines, or not brines, but kind of like cures um, the longer it sits in that throughout the day. So it becomes really kind of flavored with those seasonings. That's why it's so good. Um, but if you make it from home, the meat kind of possesses this juicy fattiness to it and it's not as absorbed in the, the flavorings. Mm. The rice is spot on. I would say I did <clears throat> the rice pretty good justice. The cilantro lime rice. The salsa is a little bit smokier than what they would have at Chipotle just because of the Chipotle, the, the Chipotle chilies in the can are smoked. And um, I didn't use Tabasco, which I, sh I should have done like a 50-50 blend of the Tabasco and the Chipotle chilies because I think they use Tabasco in their red sauce, which, ma which makes it really like sour, but also has, um, you know, kind of that wonderful Tabasco heat. I don't know, the corn salsa, pretty dang good. You can obviously cook the corn or keep it raw. Um, really depends on the season of corn. <laughs> Sorry that it's a cloudy day, so the sunlight keeps going in and out. I mean, honestly, all in all, this turned out uh, pretty much, I would say 90, 95% of the way there with what I'm normally used to at Chipotle. Love the barbacoa. Like I said, it's a little bit more juicy, refreshing, kind of has a yeah, more juicy quality to it just because it's not sitting in that third pan all day long, you know, uh, almost curing in the salty seasonings that they have, which makes the meat really good. It's just a, you know, a difference in making it fresh, having the meat, you know, an hour after it's out of the oven versus maybe a few hours or, you know, eight or nine hours. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You can make Chipotle tacos at home if you'd like to, especially if you like barbacoa meat. It's always fun to you know, be able to customize your tacos at home, especially if it's you know, inspired by something you love at a restaurant you like and uh, kind of change it up how you'd like. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give this video a big old like. Subscribe to my channel if you guys enjoy what I do. Comment down below for future video requests, things you want to see on my channel, and I'll see you guys next time with another recipe. Later, folks.